Hi again, everybody. It's Lori White from the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce back with a, another edition of Chamber TV. This is episode number 135. And today we have a very special guest. We have Dave Harvey. Dave is the vice president of Southwest Airlines. And we're going to be spending the next 30 minutes or so talking about all things air travel. And if you can believe it, this is the 50th anniversary of Southwest in the market. And we're really excited to be able to talk to Dave about uh, what's been going on with uh, Southwest uh, post COVID, talk about trends in the airline market and more specifically about all the great things that are happening with Southwest here at TF Green Airport, which by the way, is getting a new name. So uh, let me introduce uh, Dave formally. How are you? Thanks for being with us today, Dave. Thank you, Lori. Wonderful to be with you. And, and we really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we've got a longstanding relationship. We talk about the 50th, the golden anniversary for Southwest Airlines, which happens to be uh, tomorrow. Uh, so 50 years ago tomorrow, uh, June 18th, 1971, we had our maiden voyage. We actually have our 25th anniversary with TF Green coming up this October. So that's something else to, to plan for and get excited about. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, so what's going on with uh, Southwest at uh, TF Green? Give us uh, give us an update on what your plans are for uh, Rhode Island. Yeah, there's there's a lot there. A, a, a kind of a fun fact, uh, if you will. I actually was almost born in uh, Rhode Island, but my dad was deployed to Japan Navy. So uh, I, I just missed out being in Rhode Island. I was born in uh, Japan on the naval base there uh, just, just by a few months, but um, yeah, I, I think it's worth, Lori, if, if you're comfortable, just maybe taking a step back and just talking about uh, a little bit where the industry's at, where where Southwest is at. Are you, you comfortable with that? And then we can kind of drill into what that means for TF Green. Sure. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing industry wide. And, um, you know, I think folks are interested in knowing about how the airlines are recovering post COVID and then the impact here. So uh, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. It uh, being in the business, I'm in my 23rd year now. It's uh, hard to believe, but uh, you know, so seeing 9/11 and, and seeing the Great Recession and kind of up, ups and downs over 20 plus years. What uh, what's really occurred the last 15 months? It's it's almost you know words can't describe. Um, you know, clearly all the the health and well being, and on behalf of the entire Southwest team. Uh, you know, I know a lot of a lot of regions, Northeast yourself, hit extremely hard. So I, I hope you and your your loved ones uh, are, are are safe and kind of uh, taking the turn here and get getting past this. But um, uh, essentially, on paper, 2020 uh, for the airline business, airline business was doing great in 2018, 2019. By many many metrics, was a record year uh, for the U.S. Uh, airline business. And 2020 on paper looked like it was going to be even stronger. And then, of course. Uh, everything uh, changed essentially overnight. Uh, we, we saw demand uh, in those the first 10 days of March of 2020 uh, literally go negative. We, we didn't think revenue could go negative or bookings could go revenue negative. We'd never seen anything like that where cancellations far exceeded net new bookings. Uh, and you just didn't know how, how deep and how long the pandemic uh, and, and the loss of demand was, was going to happen. Uh, you know, quickly, uh, we're so thankful for the U.S. government to step in with some of the payroll support, saving saving jobs, saving the industry. Um, and, but you know, we and, and and also deemed airlines and airports like TF Green uh, essential business, and you had to get first responders to the front lines to support um, uh, the the health of the of the country. Uh, and we're we're proud to do that. Southwest was also proud to not. Uh, sunset or stop services to any airports. We were the only carrier that actually did that throughout the entire pandemic, continued to provide that critical air service into all of our existing in markets. Most of, you know, fast forwarding, you know, most of 2020, demand followed the COVID, uh, COVID curves. And, and what you were seeing is, as far as confirmed cases and hospitalizations. Uh, so when the numbers went up, demand went down. When the COVID numbers would start to subside, then you would actually see a little bit of life, you know, June of 2020, and then things pop July 4th last year. A little bit of momentum into the fall. Um, we're seeing some nice demand trends, and then the holidays hit, and the numbers spiked again. 
And I'd really kind of point to this year, Jan Feb was really, really soft. Uh, but we finally, as a country, started getting the vaccination schedule out there. Uh, and and it was it was like people got a new lease on life. They were getting uh, getting vaccinated, getting that second shot or, you know, the, the one and done with the J&J. And uh, overnight they're saying, I got to make up for lost time. I'm, I'm tired of being cooped up. I'm not only going to plan one trip, but I'm going to plan four or five trips. Uh, so uh, it's been very much focused domestically. Beaches, mountains, surf and turf uh, are, are kind of leading the charge. So you've, you've seen some of those, those beach destinations, Colorado mountains, very, very strong. Clearly there's extra, extra things in place on COVID tests for the international. Some international markets are just completely still locked down and trying to figure out health certificates and how they're going to reopen those air channels. Um, but leisure has really come back strong. And you're seeing a lot of reports that this summer, June, July, August, are almost all the way back to 2019 levels, uh, which is just amazing to be candid with you. Never would have guessed even just 60 or 90 days, the man would come back that this fast. If you, if you have flown, and I can't say enough about what Southwest and other carriers did with their health and, and wellness program. Southwest, we called it Southwest Promise, all about masks, the HEPA filters, the cleaning regimen. Uh, all, it's a multi-layered approach to make sure our employees, but then all of our travelers are safe and sound. Uh, and the data and the science really supports it's such an extreme low risk going into an airport or going in on, to, on board an, an aircraft with that multi-layered approach. Um, you know, some of the studies even said it's, uh, you know, it's the likelihood is like walking down the street and being struck by lightning. And if you think about it, there just hasn't been a whole, there hasn't been any cases, contract tracing cases uh, here in the United States. Uh, so it, it is a very, very safe environment. And a lot of those protocols will continue to stay in place. That'll be the new norm, some of the cleanliness um, and, and some of the investment we've we've made in the electrostatic spraying and the antimicrobial spraying that's going on with the aircraft that's EPA and FDA approved. But uh, so what's missing? It is the business demand. That's ultimately uh, Southwest business. This unit is uh, on, on point. I know we'll talk about this here in a little bit is really what are we doing it to make it easier for businesses to fly Southwest and, and choose Southwest I do think the business demand post Labor Day is going to come back in a big way. Just on the leisure side, you needed beaches and mountains to open up. I think people had to have places to go. You might you might have had confidence in getting on a plane, but you get something has to be open on the other end of the line. For businesses, we need offices, headquarters. You need the conferences and conventions to come back, which do, it does look like they're going to be coming back in a big way uh, this fall. So uh, I think we're going to have to be a little bit more patient on the business side and leisure looks like it's essentially back. Um, and uh, I, I do think we're, we're going to ride this wave going into 2022 and there's almost going to be kind of a renaissance of travel because people have missed it so much. They're wanting to get back out there and just live life again. Uh, that's really uh, that's really well put. I'm so glad to hear that um, things have rebounded so vigorously for the airlines, and it was uh, definitely a scary period of time when uh, bookings, as you said, went negative, and the degree to which um, business also stopped traveling, stopped reaching out, stopped you know the convention center here and all of our tourist and destination markets, you know, really shutting down. Um, so interesting to hear your perspective on what's happening around the country. So let's talk a little bit about um, what you are focusing on relative to business. And I would say, I agree with your assessment around um, after Labor Day, it seems to me uh, in speaking with um, our various businesses, business members here on the ground, that there's a lot of momentum around bringing people back after Labor Day and opening the spigot, if you will, to start that non-essential business travel. So what are, what are your thoughts on how we can stimulate demand and what are your key messages to businesses today about um, the Southwest experience? Yeah, that great tee up, Lori. There's a, there's a lot there. I, I think would start with 
you know, as, as business leaders, we do need to lead by example. We, our people have to be safe. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's table stakes. We, you know, uh, need, need to make sure that they're, they're not only safe, but they're confident and they understand all the protocols, health declarations, things like that, that have been put into place. But it's been really interesting. And if you kind of just do this thought exercise yourself, if you think about what is the purpose for the meeting or getting people together, and I, I, it's clear and I'm, I'm thankful for technology like we have here, uh, you know, this morning, the, the Zooms and, and other kind of virtual platforms, but there's a lot of reasons why you want to get people together. If you're selling, you're trying to build a new relationship, you're persuading, you're trying to collaborate. It could be internal meetings around culture, innovation, uh, strategy. And, you know, I, I, I'd say digital platforms do that to a degree, but you're just not going to get the same level of output and results if you're versus looking somebody in the white of their eyes and uh, basically reading body language. And, you know, I'm, I travel a, a ton uh, throughout the pandemic. And then really, I, I mean, I could be on the road every day right now and I, I see it coast to coast and every region's a little bit different. Um, you know, California and Hawaii, which I was out in both markets last week, um, you know, they're still rightfully so conservative. They're, they're kind of taking those initial steps to kind of reopening the economies where you've got places in the Midwest uh, and the South that, um, you know, have basically been open since last September. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty dramatic. So we have to lead by example. We have to educate, think about why um, we are meeting. It's been fascinating. If you take a lot of the high tech kind of Silicon Valley, uh, you know, the Googles, the Facebooks, even up in the PAC Northwest with the Amazons and Microsoft, where they were, they were going down this path last fall that they were going to let their employee workforce work remotely in perpetuity and forever. And a lot of those CEOs have done an about face. They're like, hey, we're losing out on culture. We're losing out on innovation. Um, you know, people don't feel as connected to their companies. We've got to start bringing people back to the offices, our corporate campuses. Um, we're, we're missing out on sales and business development. There's a clear tie to traveling and getting in front of the client and then the revenue and the sales that companies can generate. So you're seeing all kinds of studies and people raising their hand. Uh, so we, we've got to be, got to be smart, got to do it the right way. Uh, but I really think that is going to, people are seeing that on their books and now they're like, Hey, we got to get our people back out there for all those various reasons I, uh, I just mentioned. So um, that, that's, that's kind of how we see the, the playing field here. And then Southwest, we historically, you know, our, the mindset has been a little bit more direct to consumer, go to Southwest.com, our wonderful, you know, most rewarding rapid rewards program. Um, a lot of goodness and industry leading there over the decades as travel programs for corporations, big and small, the federal government, higher ed, a lot of state and local um, entities. We had not made the investments with our sales team, our services team. And then there's a lot of distribution and technology under the covers, the booking tools that many of you use to book your travel and to kind of manage your program. So we've been uh, really putting money where our mouth is kind of quietly with COVID and a lot of these other things going on, making an investment so that it's easier for the travel managers and travel decision makers at these companies to manage their Southwest book of business and also doing things to sweeten the pot for the travelers as well. So we're thrilled. We've got a lot of things that we're going to market with. The biggest one is we're going live with Sabre GDS industry standard uh, here in about 40 days, which is a, a big booking platform that many of your companies, your organizations use. Uh, we're bringing back our network. I know we're going to talk about that here in a little bit uh, about how we're restoring the network and all the new cities. And then, you know, what does that mean uh, for Rhode Island and bringing back service there? So there's just Southwest, we are very fortunate. We're a, we're a conservative company. Herb Kelleher, I give him all the credit, kind of our maverick founder. Uh, you know, he prepared us in our DNA over 50 years. In the best of times, you've got to prepare to do well in the lean times. And it's been awfully lean for 15 months. We actually think June right this month 
will be our first time to actually make money in 15 months. We're going to burn through about $7 billion. Um, but because we've got the strongest balance sheet, the best credit rating, the cash flow, we can weather the storm. So we're actually going to be able to come out of this stronger than the competition and grow even faster in what we think is going to be a bullish economic cycle here the next few years. Uh, so a lot of a uh, lot of excitement here as we turn 50 as a company, and I think the next 50 are going to be even brighter. You mentioned uh, corporate bookings and some tools and platforms that you are going to introduce and reintroduce. Tell us a little bit about how corporate bookings and the technology corporations are using, how that's changed over the last you know, couple of years. I imagine that it's become uh, much more algorithmic based. And what can businesses learn um, from you about how to be more efficient in their booking? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And there has been a, a lot of change and COVID even expedited uh, you know, some of that change at the end of the, it, it, well, I'd start with, if you think about the travel managers, is somebody at your organization that's on point for uh, arranging, making decisions, managing the program, they have to answer to a lot of different people in the organization, somebody in finance, maybe somebody in supply chain, somebody in people, but then they have to keep all of your precious assets, all those travelers uh, you know, happy as well um, and, and, and friction free. So some companies decide to manage all that in-house. Some of them will partner with a travel management company. Um, and then you need the, the software and the tools and the systems to make it easy for your travelers to book. We know business traveler, they change their itineraries very frequently. Um, you know, I'll plug Southwest again with our no change fee policy, you know, no bags, no change, a lot of things inherently valuable in our, in our product that makes it easy for those road warriors. Uh, the meeting gets done early and they hop on the earlier flight or, or uh, you know, need to stay a little bit later and they can jump on that, that next one. Um, but you, you, you got to make it, it's almost an extension of your people policy or your HR policy in a lot of organizations. So the front end tools have to be easier for, easy for the travelers and then the mid office and back office tools have to be easy to kind of track duty of care and expense and flexibility and waivers and favors. There's a lot that goes on underneath the, the covers. Whoever's in charge of travel at your uh, at your organization, you probably want to go give them a pat on the back uh, for what they've done uh, the, the last 15 months. But, but to the question, I, I think there's been a big kind of transition to focus on the traveler, especially in a heated labor market right now. I mean, every day some Wall Street Journal report comes out about how hard it, it is to find talent right now. Um, and if you're making them jump through hoops and it's a headache for them, that's just one more reason to say, I'm done with this. I'm gonna go to another, another company. So there's been a big emphasis kind of transitioning and making it easier uh, for the travel traveler to get on the road, not only the airline piece, but the hotel, the car transport, it's all, integrated into the, the traveler journey. And I think that integration point um, is big as well. And then when something does go bump in the night, because it does, irregular ops, uh, you know, you, you change that itinerary and for some reason it's not going through my booking tool. I got to call my agent or got to call the, the home office, making sure that you can get that service to, the, to your travelers as swiftly as possible. So a lot of technology, you know, you got the, the Ubers and the Lyfts. And if you just kind of think of that mindset of, of trying to make it uh, easier on the traveler, a lot of that is kind of swinging into the overall travel space on the, on the airline and hotel side uh, as well. And, you know, if folks want help, uh, we've got great account management teams and we can kind of help you through kind of where is your program today? What are the trends going and are there opportunities for you to improve uh, in this in this new landscape that we live in today. We are talking with uh, Dave Harvey, Vice President of Southwest Business. We are live on Facebook, we are live on Twitter, we are live on YouTube, and we are welcoming your questions. If you have a question for Dave, um, we're specifically talking about um, business travel, but I'm sure Dave is uh, 
open to talk about leisure as well. Uh, we've pretty much covered the landscape, uh, learned a lot in the last few minutes about uh, where the airline industry is uh, relative to the recovery period. Um, so Dave, I wanna pick up where you left off a minute ago relative to the new platforms that you are going to be introducing and uh, reintroducing specifically um, for business. And you talked about the industry standard and some of the things that you're going to be doing to uh, make business travel easier. So I just wanna give you an opportunity to really, again, um, really reflect on how what you're doing today is different than you know pre-COVID. Yeah, Lori, thank you for the opportunity. The easiest way to think about it, our mantra is channel of choice, friction free. So wh what is that what does that really mean? And actually I'll add one other item. We get a lot of questions about hey, are are your low one and get away fares are going to be available? It, absolutely. So it's also about making sure all of our products, the industry term is content. So business select anytime want to get away. Actually, I'll do a plug right now. We have got the craziest fair sale I've ever seen uh, at Southwest in 50 years going on right now. Today is the last day. We launched it Tuesday. Essentially, any fair that's out there for the fall, think post Labor Day through the first few days of November. So 50 days in the fall for our 50th anniversary, everything is 50% off right now. So uh, the bookings are, are th through the roof and, and today is the last day. So a little, little plug for that. We're, we're very, very pleased with the demand that's coming in. But uh, so the, the contents there, all of, all, of the, all of our everyday low fares, want to get away fares are in whatever channel. And then you tell us if, if you use a GDS, you use a, t a travel management company, We've got a great free online booking portal called Swabiz. It's been out there for over 20 years. Uh, many companies, big and small, love it because it's it's truly free. You got all the reporting. You can manage it. Uh, we actually have a Rapid Awards program for business. Just like if you think about Rapid Awards, um, you know, as an individual traveler and racking up all those points and using it, we actually have programs now uh, where that's the incentive where your company kind of banks those points. The, the, the message here, though, is that we're kind of industry standard or industry leading across the board with all of those channels and distribution platforms. So you tell us how you want to work with Southwest to manage travel, and then we can start to understand what are your travel needs and are there ways with kind of discounts or rebates or value adds with kind of loyalty components there's a lot of other things that in, engaging in South, with Southwest Airlines into a formal travel agreement that we can add even more value um, at the end of the day for your organizations to pick to pick Southwest. So um, it's that's the way to think about it. We've got tons of expertise that can kind of walk you through what truly is the best uh, channel for you to make that channel of choice, um, and then uh, we can we can work in partnership to to move the relationship forward. Sure. So how would people learn about how to engage with Southwest? What would be a couple of first steps for them? Yeah, the uh, two easy ones. One, we've got kind of our uh, our homepage, if you will. It's it's www.southwest.com slash about business, uh, you know, i.e. Southwest business is, is our arm. And the other you've got uh, you see Dave Harvey. Uh, please reach out through LinkedIn or you can follow up with an email. And I will uh, I will get you mm -hmm. in contact with our the right account management team to make sure that we're we're servicing your needs. Reflect, if you will, Dave, on um, what you're seeing with the local marketplace here: um, Providence versus Boston, growth versus attrition. What are you What are you forecasting for the next uh, twelve months? Yeah, we're excited. We're now to a point. You know, the the demand, as I was describing earlier honestly, I think snuck up on the entire industry. It, it dropped so fast, we were kind of bumping along. And now the, the kind of a rocket ship here, kind of the hockey stick is coming out uh, the, the other side, which is, uh, which is very, very encouraging. We, we launched 18 new markets while the COVID was going on. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of beaches and mountains, but we also, COVID gave us the opportunity to get into places like the north side of Chicago, O'Hare, north side of Houston, uh, intercontinental, farther south and south Florida, Miami. 
um, and, a, and a lot of other destinations. We just announced uh, Syracuse, New York, kind of rounding out our upstate uh, New York portfolio as well. Um, so a lot of aircraft and people, because we had to stay productive and had to get into these new revenue pools, and they, they've all worked brilliantly. Our network planning teams are batting a thousand. So it was kind of a spread strategy as our core network had to kind of come down because you just, you couldn't support um, in many of our cities that we had been in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, there just was not enough demand to support all the flying and aircraft and people pre pandemic. Now we are at a point, we are returning that network quickly uh, and as, as well as, as TF Green, so excited to see you get Rhode Island International. You know, it's something that's been talked about for quite some time, but I think uh, it's absolutely the, white, the right way to kind of brand uh, your, your airport. You've got a jewel there. Um, so we are, we're bringing back the network and really looking at this fall. So not only kind of our core offerings that we've got, uh, you know, the, the, the great nonstops to places like Baltimore and Chicago and Orlando and Tampa, you know, I know we run kind of different Florida seasonal, uh, you know, looking at, you know, DCA slots kind of have their own process for bringing those back, but looking at bringing back the, the, the double daily to, uh, to DCA from Providence as well. Um, we just re-upped our order book and topped up. So we, we have, now have not only the aircraft coming the back half of this year, but 64 firm aircraft that we plan to use for commercial service in 2022. So network planning as we speak are reintroducing all the aircraft and all of our great crews, our flight attendants and pilots. Um, and, you know, I, TF Green has performed well for us over the last 25 years and markets like that continue to rise to the top as we think about where we wanna put that next best aircraft ad. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Dave. Um, in past years, we have worked very closely with your network planners and with TF Green Airport um, leaders to drive more business, drive more flights into Rhode Island. And it's really incumbent on our um, business leaders, our business travel planners to continue to communicate with us at the chamber to tell us, you know, hey, we, you know, we've got a whole, you know, we've, we're opening a new facility and in, in Denver, as an example, we're going to be booking, you know, a lot of travel, direct travel to that facility, giving us the heads up on where businesses need to go, where they have the bodies um, that are planning to, you know, to fly to these particular destinations. And then we turn around and we feed that information back to you and to the other airlines so that you can plan accordingly. So if you would, wouldn't mind, Dave, just address the, um, you know, the importance of having that two-way communication with um, businesses on the ground and having them have a voice in where they need to go. Yeah, th thank you, Lori. And I cannot stress enough uh, what you teed up there and and, and the, the Rhode Island uh, region has been kind of in line with this where you can kind of harness the voice of the business community to talk about all these you know projects or offices that are coming online. If you put yourself in the shoes of one of our network planners, a lot of the data you know, it's, it's very analytical, a lot of optimization, but if you look at that data, it's really looking in the rear view mirror. So being able to look at through the front window of the car here, with that intelligence and that input that you can kind of harness and provide is just invaluable. That allows, you know, we're proud for 25 years, almost since day one, we've been the market leader there in, in Rhode Island and about 40% of the customers Actually, it grew in 2020. We were, I was going back and looking at this data in 2019. We were about 38% of the marketplace. We actually grew during the pandemic to 40%. Uh, and we've got the opportunity to continue growing um, and, and just being the hometown carrier. But it allows our network planners with this data to say, okay, well, there's, there's something going on in the Midwest or in Texas or to Denver. I'm just making those up. And we know there's going to be enough inherent demand that we can actually go ahead and drop in the nonstop and that the demand will kind of follow with the nonstop. It, it's a big bet to put an aircraft, especially on a longer haul route. It's just it, the expense goes up. You burn more fuel, more crew time, on and on and on, overhead costs. So, um, you know, it's 
it, each each flight is kind of its own business case, if you will. So having that input is something that can kind of tip the scales and drive the confidence to say, hey, this this route is going to work for uh, for the for the locals and for Southwest. It's going to be a win win. Absolutely. And um, we've been really happy to be uh, partners with Southwest and you have reacted to a lot of the input that our chamber members have um, put forward. So on behalf of the entire Rhode Island market, I want to I want to thank you for that, Dave, and invite you to, uh, you know, continue to reach out to us um, for data. And I know that our our travel planners are really, um, really pleased to be able to be partners with you. So in the uh, remaining minutes that we have left, um, we have a question uh, from some of our viewers and they're questioning around, you know, the sort of the atmosphere in the planes these days and, you know, the degree to which, you know, the, the flights are, you know, fully booked, are they congested? Are you still serving the peanuts? Are you having any trouble, um, you know, attracting talent? We talked about that a few minutes ago. Um, you know, folks coming back to work. So paint a picture, if you will, of, of the experience flying Southwest today, either, you know, business or leisure travel. Absolutely. So it, it, the onboard product and service and offering, uh, rightfully so, is, uh, is a little different. So let me, let me explain that here real quick. We, um, early days in pandemic, we had to end all onboard service because it was all about physical touch and spacing. And, and intentionally, we didn't want our flight attendants up, up and down the aisles, just uh, having more potential touch points. Uh, so most most of the pandemic, uh, clearly the mask, which we've all learned uh, from the science is kind of sans the vaccine. That was the best tool we all had in our back pocket or on our on our face there. And we were we implemented the mask policy before the federal mandate, before it was cool to wear wear a mask. And I know everybody's tired of masks and in a lot of other areas of, of life that's starting to roll back. There is still the mandate through September 13th. So we kind of just need to get through. Uh, the, the heat of the summer here and a lot of the traffic and, and uh, we'll, we, we do think that after that September 13th date rolls on that will, the mass will come down uh, in, the air, in the airplanes and, and the airports. Um, we have reintroduced light service um, and uh, what, what you'll see is kind of water and sodas. Uh, we have brought back uh, kind of the snack packs uh, and pretzels uh, as well on certain, certain lengths of flight. We were going, you may, may have seen it in the news the last few weeks, we were going to introduce um, alcohol. We've heard from a lot of business travelers. They want their coffee in the morning and they want have a have a beer or a glass of wine after five on the return flight. And um, we were headed down that path. There have been, unfortunately, you know, it, it gets magnified in today's media world and with all the social platforms. Uh, so it's not the norm, but when it happens, it makes headline news and it's not just Southwest, it's all the carriers. Uh, I think just America is a little bit anxious um, and we're kind of getting back out there in the airports and airplanes. And it's kind of a new muscle that you kind of got to get into. The planes have filled up pretty quickly. So we just reported in an 8K, um, you know, May, we, we were uh, slightly over 80 uh, percent as far as our load factor, which is essentially how we represent total percentage of, of seats occupied uh, on board. So it it the airports are busy. The planes are busy. Uh, you know, people are, are kind of are getting back out there. Some folks, you know, use the mask as kind of a platform, unfortunately, but we have to be very, very stringent. If you're not going to wear the mask on board the plane or for the duration of the flight, you're not going to fly Southwest. And it's just, we have to take a hard and fast until we start rolling some of that back in the fall. So we're not we're not going to add alcohol into the mix right now. We got to take care of the travelers and our frontline employees. Uh, so that was the right decision to pause that. And you'll start to see us as we get into the fall introduce more of the services for both short haul, medium haul, long haul, all all duration uh, of flight. How's the weather been in your travels? <laughs> kind of. Uh, the, the weather, uh, you know, last week I was uh, I was in uh, Vegas, Honolulu and Chicago. Vegas was 107. 
I landed and uh, it took took my breath away. It's been pretty mild here in North Texas and Dallas where we're headquartered. Uh, summer definitely hit here this last week, but uh, Honolulu is, I think uh, the islands are always gorgeous and Chicago was very, very pleasant uh, as well. I was in San Antonio last night. I'm flying to Houston later today. So uh, Texas, <laughs> the, the mild spring that we uh, spoiled us, mother nature and summer and the humidity is here. So mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're, we're paying the price now. Right. <laughs> Read a lot about the, uh, the extreme heat in Texas. Uh, but I guess like anything else in Rhode Island, we just say, wait a day and, and things will change. But, um, you know, the variations in the weather always create issues for the airlines. And uh, uh, it's interesting to, to hear how everyone, you know, responds uh, to that. So Dave, um, as we conclude, uh, any final thoughts, uh, suggestions, uh, any specific requests to our delegation that run the airport, uh, our great team there led by Iftikhar Hamad. Um, I know that the team at the airport is very, very laser focused on keeping costs at TF Green in check, uh, being competitive, making sure the landing fees and the levels of taxation on the gas and other inputs that influence um, the route planners that you mentioned, really highly focused on making sure that we deliver the best possible experience at our airport for our airlines. Um, so, no, Laura, you nailed it. It's Ithgar, which we know well, and that that uh, leadership team they they know the business. They uh, uh, they they know how it runs. I, I I would maybe close, you know. Southwest business, at the end of the day, we want to be the low cost provider so we can provide low fares with the best service. And when we say best service, that doesn't mean, you know, lounges and first class. I mean, there's there's something about the warmth and hospitality that our frontline teams can deliver, give them the autonomy to lean in the customer and do the right thing. But when I think about low cost, best service, that's how the airport needs to think about this as well. Uh, I'm, I, I didn't say cheap. When I say low cost, there's a way to be efficient and productive and keep your costs low because it's a competitive game. And when our network planners are cranking the numbers and somebody's CPE cost per employment is 15 or 20 and somebody's five, every single flight is burdened by those extra costs. So we want a good customer experience. We don't need the Taj Mahal. Um, you know, we, we want we want a good good airport experience, very efficient, high tempo, get people along their way, both them and their bags, good concessions, but be very, very mindful of costs. And that'll serve you well as Southwest. We are so proud to be the hometown carrier there, uh, TF Green, and we aim to keep growing uh, with the region. And I think that's going to spell success for both the airport and Southwest. Fantastic. So happy 50th anniversary to Southwest and also happy 25th anniversary uh, in our relationship with Southwest here in Rhode Island. And uh, as we close out, why don't you just do one more promo on the exciting 50th anniversary offer, half fare, you know, half price on fares for 50 days. Yeah, absolutely. Go out to southwest.com if you're booking for leisure. And we have the 50% off in all of those business booking channels uh, we, we talked about earlier. So you should be able to go right now on your corporate booking tool and get those great rates, whether it's business select anytime or uh, want to get away. If you've got some travel plans post Labor Day, go take advantage of it now. Today's the last day. <laughs> okay. Today is the last day, everybody. Make sure you jump to attention and get that done and uh, make a lot of folks in your organization uh, happy and, hey, your family as well. So Dave Harvey, VP of Southwest Business, we have really appreciated uh, having you with us today here on Chamber TV, talking a little bit about everything that's happening in the sky and uh, the many dynamics um, that are part of, you know, travel booking and what Southwest is doing to keep everybody safe and to keep uh, business competitive and uh, keeping America on the move. So thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Lori. Appreciate your leadership. And if there's anything we can do to support your businesses, do not hesitate. Reach out. Absolutely.
Have a good rest of the week. Too.